Hi there guys, Gareth here and welcome to this Venal Plonk production and welcome to this somewhat impromptu video. However, the subject matter of this video has been in my mind for quite some time now and it's something I've spoken about in the past but it's something I finally need to crank down on and actually do what I'm saying I'm going to do. So recently, especially this year, there's been the rise of the tea spill channels or the commentary channels, if you prefer, in which you kind of suggest by the name, there's been an uptick or a, what's the word, a resurgence, if you will, of channels commenting on other channels. Now, often what these channels do is they comment on some of the bigger channels with multiple millions of subscribers, I think in the hope of garnering some sort of blowback. Sorry, that sounds a bit inappropriate, but some sort of... They're riding on the coattails, essentially. What they're doing is they often put the titles or the YouTube namers, namers, names in their videos in order to garner some sort of uh, splashback. I'm not sure what the expression is going to be, but they're hoping that some of these people's subscribers come to their video and hopefully opens the eyes of some of these these viewers of these bigger channels and I the hope they get subscribers themselves. I think you know what I'm trying to say. Essentially they're riding on coattails and hoping that they gain a sub subscriber base from them by themselves by riding on the coattails of others. Now the problem with these videos are is that it casts a shadow on these bigger YouTube personas or channels or people and also, sometimes you don't know whether they're genuine, fake, or just trying to, you know, like, as I said, ride on the coattails of these bigger channels. And I often find myself questioning the legitimacy of these videos and questioning the legitimacy of some of these bigger channels. Now, a lot of these channels have changed drastically. I watch a, or used to watch a large number of these bigger channels. And as time has gone on, as their subscriber counts have gone up, these channels have changed drastically. They become a lot more PG orientated or PG 13 orientated. And you can tell they're being managed in some sort of way. We know YouTube is going in a PG direction. YouTube wants to excuse me, they want to appeal to a far larger audience than they do already, simply because I don't know if anyone knows this, but YouTube doesn't make any money. YouTube doesn't make Google or rather Alphabet any money. YouTube hasn't been making Alphabet any money for quite some time now, to be honest, and I don't know whether how many people actually know that. I don't know the exact business term for YouTube, but because Google makes so much money through everything else, they do with AdWords, with advertising, with search engine optimization. You can pay to have your page at the top of Google. You can pay for ad space on Google. You can pay to have your... Oh, I forgot what it is, but there's, there's another thing you can do to pay. Uh, long story short, you can actually pay to have your searches come up first if someone voice searches for your particular site. There are many things you can do with Google, and Google is a multi-billion dollar company and they're not going to go away anytime soon so because google earn so much money or alphabet i keep forgetting what you've got to remember is google is now part of alphabet as youtube is alphabet is essentially the parent company and google is now within alphabet but most people still associate google and youtube with each other so i'm just going to use those terms interchangeably and i do apologize if it gets a bit confusing but you know where i'm coming from so because of how much money Google slash Alphabet earn elsewhere on the internet, they can somewhat afford to allow YouTube to not earn as much money as the rest. In fact, as I said, YouTube doesn't earn any profits for Alphabet slash Google. They're trying to have it turn over a profit by things with YouTube Premium, YouTube Music Now, there are various things happening on YouTube to monetize it to a point where it's going to start making money. Because the problem with it is when it comes to executives and directors of a company, there's only so much time before they start saying, hang on a minute, this thing needs to earn money. It can't keep 
draining money from our accounts. The thing you've got to remember about high up executives and directors and people who run a company at the very, very top, all they care about is essentially where their next bonus comes from. Their bonuses are two, three percent. But don't forget these people earn millions and millions a year. So two, three percent ends up being hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars at pounds or whatever currency they earn. So you know, at the end of the day, that two, three percent to them is earn is worth a unfathomable for us anyway amount of money and they want their bonuses they want their pay rises and if a part of the company isn't doing well they start questioning the lower downs they start pressuring them they start saying hang on a minute where's where's the moolah you know they don't care that the rest of alphabet slash google was earning so much money they want more money in their back pockets you have to understand that most directors and executives are greedy. Let's be honest. It's it's not... It's just like a genius to really understand that a lot of them are greedy and very money-focused. And often don't care about the consumer or the person behind the scenes. There are some companies that are far more customer-based or consumer-based, like Amazon, I'd actually say. But there are some that do have that darker side to business and that kind of stuff so i know i just probably taught a lot of people how to suck an egg but you get where i'm coming from the other thing that doesn't help is susan wasniaki which is the ceo of youtube is a snowflake in the highest regard she can't take criticism to save her life and the problem with being a ceo of a company is you need to have a backbone you need to have a spine you need to have a lot more confidence in yourself than she does she breaks at the slightest mention of feminism or masculinity or the patriarchy to give you an idea a staff member at google not even youtube at google made an offhand comment about a female member of staff and he lost his job because Susan Wozniacki was part of the board that decided whether they should get rid of him or not. He was a highly skilled programmer who actually went on to work for another company. And that company had given him a whole suite of benefits because he is a highly skilled programmer and actually was trying his best to earn YouTube money. Despite working for Google, he was actually trying to get work on an algorithm and work on ways that YouTube can start actually earning money for Google. So Susan Wozniacki, who's the CEO of YouTube, sacked somebody who was working on ways of trying to get YouTube to earn money just because he made an offhand comment about a female member of staff. And before people go any further, yes, I'm not necessarily condoning what he said but he did not deserve to lose his job. He deserved a slap on the wrist. He potentially deserved some sort of disciplinary, but he did not deserve to lose his job, in my eyes anyway. I'm, you know, I'm not PC. I'm not politically correct, nor am I, you know, racist, feminist, uh, sexist, any of those things. I am actually feminist, the point where I do believe in equal rights. What I mean is I'm not sexist, racist, ageist, all those various things. I am you know very accommodating with a lot of things i'm not uh, transgenderist or you know um homophobic or any of those things i you know i, I appreciate and welcome anybody but how can i put this the, there comes a point where you've got to look at the facts and I don't know the exact situation that played out with, with him. But again, he he may be... Yeah, I, understand, I, I appreciate and understand he probably needed a speaking to. But he didn't need to lose his job. But I'm guessing way off track. But long story short, um, YouTube is going in a direction of being a lot more PG focused. And a lot of the more racier, more adult orientated content on youtube is getting hit badly which is why a lot of the youtube channels that don't want to 
uh, what's the word, damage their roots or forget where they came from, such as Philip DeFranco, who still swears in this video, still does, you know, content that, to be honest, Google slash YouTube would probably deem inappropriate for their vast PG audience. He still goes ahead and does it because he's got Patreon backing. Now, there are figures out there of how much Philip DeFranco earns. He doesn't make it public. But apparently, according to some sources, take those a pinch of salt, he earns a quarter of a million through Patreon per month for the content he produces. And he produces a heck of a lot of content. Plus, he has a whole team of people working for him. So, although that quarter of a million may seem quite a bit of money, of course, he's got a whole team of people to look after. He's got a business to run. He's got taxes to pay, bills to pay, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I'm sure even though he earns quite a bit of money from Patreon, I can imagine a lot of that goes on making his channel better than ever. I'm just basically defending Philip DeFranco for a minute because some of the hate he gets, I feel, is a bit unwarranted. He was owned by Discovery for a while, but he basically, uh, when the lease or the contract ended with Discovery, he decided to step away from Discovery because he felt... He felt as if they were trying to guide his content in a direction he didn't want it to go. So he basically started Patreon support, a Patreon in order to get support for his channel. So he didn't have to rely on the YouTube algorithm and the YouTube AdSense, all that kind of stuff. He could just do what he wanted to do. And there are lots of different big YouTube channels that are doing exactly the same. They're using Patreon to basically allow them to still do what they want to do. So I just went on a massive tangent to basically say that YouTube is trying to go in a PG-13 direction. <coughs> <coughs> and as a result, all these big channels that have agents, they have managers, their managers avoid these, avoid, advise these people to become PG-13. But there's a darker side to all of this. And it's that a lot of these bigger YouTubers often come up come off as fake or parts of YouTube come off as manufactured or they come up as produced, overly produced. You know, I know YouTube back in the day used to swear like a sailor. Now they don't. They've completely been gutted. They've had I'm not gonna say they've had their spine ripped out, but they've definitely there's been an effect. Because a long story short, they're being managed by a manager who wants them be honest their manager earns money through their youtube channel so they want their youtube channel to grow as high as possible so they can get a higher percentage from that person it's all about money at the end of the day and i've been thinking for a long long time now that i actually get a bit depressed sometimes when i watch youtube because there's so much shit that goes around youtube there's so many people riding on the coattails of others or there's so many people trying to bullshit their way out of a paper bag or trying to do some super shady shit to, just to get money you know i don't really want to name names but we all know there are some youtubers out there who've tried some pretty shady tactics to get money from you know mis-selling their subscribers stuff to misadvertising stuff or falsely advertising things to just straight up scamming their audience and it really does make me paranoid it makes me worried it makes me just so much of youtube youtube isn't what it used to be in any way shape or form and i've been watching a few or happen to be watching a few people recently who don't watch a lot of youtube and as a result, their content is, how can I put this, is what I want to watch. It's not manufactured. It's not highly produced. It's It comes from the soul. It comes from the heart, if you know what I mean. Because they're not watching other YouTubers and trying to make their content like other YouTubers. What I'm basically trying to say is I think I'm going to step away from watching youtube there will be a few channels i will keep up to date with um like beat em ups and northern lion a few channels here and there that i'm going to keep up to date with and another channel bad uh, back pocket gamer who i've subscribed to recently just to name a few but the vast majority of youtube i'm going to 
try my best to step away from. Now, I do suffer from FOMO, or fear of missing out, which is why I subscribe to a large number of YouTube channels, but there comes a point where I've got to decide what's best for me, basically for my mental health, so to speak. Not that I, you know, I suffer from depression, that kind of stuff. When you physically feel yourself feeling depressed and not the best, hey, it rhymes, when you're watching certain YouTube content, you've got to think about what you're going to do about that. And for me, personally, I think stepping back, stepping away from watching as much YouTube as I do is probably the best solution to that plan. I've just got to follow through on that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll just watch Giant Bomb watch DVDs and Blu-rays in game rather than watching the abnormal amount of YouTube that I watch. But um yeah, it, it's it's depressing me. Not in a clinical sense, but it is dulling my mood quite a bit seeing all this stuff that's happening on YouTube. And I just I don't want anything to do with it. I'm thirty now and I'm done with drama, to be honest. I'm done with with all the shit that goes on on YouTube, and it's just, it upsets, upsets me. I'm actually going to be honest at the moment and say it upsets me to a certain extent. I'm that one that, I, I, I don't like admitting um, human, I'm not very sensitive, is what I'm trying to say. So admitting that things upset me is actually a big step for me in, you know, admitting there are some things. I'm a very, I have a front, a shell, if you will, a mask, if you will, a wall. <laughs> How many all idioms can I think of? And I go around with a certain bravado pretending that things don't affect me or I don't easily get upset or sad, which I don't easily get upset or sad, but there comes a point where you do have to admit if something's making you, you know, physically sad, then you've got to think about maybe it's best to get that out of your life and, you know, move on with things. Anyway, this video has been a lot longer than I anticipated, but, you know, I think one of my new use resolutions is going to be to step away from watching a large amount of YouTube, or as much YouTube as I do now. Anyway, guys, you know the spiel. Like, dislike, subscribe, comment down below. And you've been a very patient and supportive audience. And until next time, please take care. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day. Ta-ra.